Good morning, everyone. California Attorney General Rob Bonta here, and um, very pleased to be with you today to say that today is a great day. It's a, a very happy day for all of us, but especially for the hundreds of millions of Americans who rely on the Affordable Care Act for coverage and to protect their care. This morning, a uh, seven justice majority of the United States Supreme Court ruled that the Affordable Care Act is the law of the land, a major victory for our communities nationwide, a major victory for the 133 million Americans with pre-existing conditions, including 17 million children who rely on the law to keep their health care affordable and to protect them from being denied coverage, a major victory for the millions of Americans who can only afford their medications because of the ACA, and a major victory for Americans who can only afford care thanks to the ACA's prohibition against lifetime insurance limits. It's a major victory for the millions of Americans who have lost their jobs and with them their employee-based health care insurance who still have access to health coverage through the ACA. It's a major victory for the 20 million Americans, including at least 3.8 million Californians who would likely have lost their health coverage completely. And a major victory for our country, which has suffered so much from the COVID-19 pandemic and which needs the ACA now more than ever. This morning, the Supreme Court announced that it agreed with our argument, California's argument, that the other side did not have standing to challenge the constitutional, the constitutionality, excuse me, of the individual mandate. Seven of the nine justices on the Supreme Court rejected this latest challenge to the ACA on the ground that none of the plaintiffs could establish that they are harmed in any way by the individual mandate provision. So for the first time in its 10 year history, the Supreme Court has declared, excuse me, for the third time, the third time in its over 10 year history, the Supreme Court has declared the ACA constitutional, a matter that we hope is now settled for good. Access to the affordable health care coverage empowers working families. And as millions suffer great loss from this pandemic, the ACA will continue to be a safety net, a much needed safety net to help support them and ensure they can continue to see a doctor. I want to recognize our team here in California who carried on their shoulders the faith and hopes of millions of Americans. I first want to share a, a huge shout out to Secretary of, of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra for the, for the United States, for his leadership, his pioneership, his work on this case. Um, and I want to thank the great team uh, that has been at the forefront, starting with Michael Mongan, our California Solicitor General, who stepped into the ring and argued this case before the High Court, Renica George, Senior Assistant Attorney General, Sam Siegel, Deputy Solicitor General, Amari Hammonds, Associate Deputy Solicitor General, Kathleen Borgers, Supervising Deputy Attorney General, Nellie Palmer, Supervising Deputy Attorney General, and Nimrod Elias, Deputy Attorney General. I want to acknowledge also our coalition of 20 states and the District of Columbia who work side by side with us to defend Americans' health care. I also want to acknowledge our vast and diverse coalition of cities, counties, medical professionals, health experts, labor leaders, hospital and medical associations, and nonprofits who stayed in the fight and remained committed to defending this vital law. I want to thank Speaker Nancy Pelosi and the members of the U.S. House of Representatives for their tenacious defense of the ACA alongside us. And I want to thank the doctors and other healthcare providers and others across our healthcare system who stepped up to support our position and the ACA and who have served every day on the front lines in our country's fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. In a year that has been marked by so much upheaval and so much pain, I am hopeful that this decision is an indication that better days are ahead for our country and our communities. Uh, with that, let me pass it on to California Secretary of Health and Human Services, Mark Dolly. Good morning to everyone and uh, thank you for including me uh, in this important uh, day, this important celebration. Uh, Mr. Bonta, thank you for your leadership and I echo your sentiment that today is a great day. Today is an important day in the ongoing uh, pursuit, the ongoing fight to make sure that healthcare is in reach for all 
uh, those in our country, all Americans, all of our neighbors, all those who are here uh, in California, uh, those who have been uh, ineligible for health coverage in the past. Today is a great day because it does, as our Attorney General eloquently said, mark a day of security and safety for so many. Uh, back in 2014, I remember uh, the moments as a frontline physician thinking about uh, what this meant for low-income Californians, those who not only had a chance to uh, purchase insurance, get insurance through our world-class exchange here in California as the chair of the Covered California Board. I've never been more proud uh, to be part of that team. Our fearless leader, uh, Mr. Peter Lee, and his team, our entire board, the advocates and stakeholders who make that the most uh, successful exchange in our country, providing uh, over a million, uh, some, some days up to 1.6 million Californians health coverage. Uh, it is an important uh, uh, opportunity to continue to provide access to care that is in reach of so many Californians who before the ACA did not have that coverage. I want to thank our governor for stepping up in his first year in office to expand the coverage that covered California could provide, deepen the subsidies, not just to the lowest income uh, eligible Californians for covered California coverage, but to middle income Californians who were always cut out of those subsidies and now and still today had that chance even before the rest of the country did. California boldly led and put its own resources in, waiting for the federal government, as we have seen under the Biden-Harris administration, the expansion of those subsidies. And that important work continues as we at Calvary California this day of one of our uh, uh, board meetings, where we will have a chance to talk about how the protections of the ACA, the support of those federal subsidies are going to help make uh, access to affordable, high quality health care in reach of so many Californians. Not to mention the important work that has been done since 2014 to expand Medi-Cal uh, in California, our version of Medicaid to so many Californians who before 2014 were not eligible. Those individuals who uh, for one reason or another income just a little bit above uh, what was the federal poverty limit, those who uh, didn't meet other criteria today, nearly a third of Californians uh, receive their coverage through Medicaid. And I'm proud of our Department of Healthcare Services, the many health plans and local uh, plans and providers who make that program possible, make it available widely to so many Californians. And I look forward as we come out of this pandemic that we continue to build upon the success of Medicaid, make it a stronger, more equitable program in the months and years to come as we advance uh, in the governor's comeback plan, roaring back to improve Medicaid, invest in our CalAIM proposal, uh, as well, well as many other features. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention those who are currently left out of some of the federal supports and what California is proposing to do by expanding coverage eligibility for Medi-Cal for undocumented Californians 60 and older. Uh, this is a bold proposition to include and fill a gap that has been unfilled for too long. Too many of our most vital Californians uh, were uh, tragically uh, ravished during the pandemic. Uh, individuals without coverage had a harder time accessing care, had a harder time accessing the information to keep them and their families safe. And we saw that day in and day out as we looked at the cases and tragically the deaths that came to Californians during the pandemic. We uh, are committed, we are stronger in our resolve to continue to build on today's announcement by the Supreme Court, double down on our commitment to making uh, quality, accessible, affordable health care in reach for all Californians. And I look forward to partnering with you, Mr. Bonta, your colleagues, our colleagues across the state and the nation, our friends in Washington, yes, Speaker Pelosi, our senators, and so many others, uh, including uh, our own California 
uh, 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 leader and federal secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra. Today is a special important day. It is an important step in our journey, and I look forward to joining the rest of you on the remainder of this important walk towards equity and quality for all. Thank you, Secretary Ghali, and let me just uh, say again, thank you for your, your leadership. Thank you for your strong partnership. Thank you to Governor Newsom uh, for his powerful leadership and his strong partnership as well. Um, this is California uh, being California, ensuring that uh, Americans throughout the nation, Californians here in our state have uh, access to key programs and protections and and services that really make a difference in their lives. So it, it's an important day. It's a proud day. It's a special day. And I'm, I can take questions now, and so can Secretary Ghali. Uh, 